Hey guys, Catfish44 here, and I'm sorry if the camera's moving. No, it's not like my other videos where the camera's been sitting still over there. But I found this thing that's kind of like a tripod, but you can also hold it. See, I can move the camera around fairly steadily. Isn't that, isn't that cool? But, so I just wanted to test out for this video. Tell me what you think about it in the comments, I guess. But, um, anyways, as you can see, there's Jesus in the background. You're gonna need him for this video topic. This video topic is about how to not get ripped off when buying coins online. Yeah, I know my last two videos have been kind of political videos, and this one's coin video. I'm, I'm trying to diversify my content, you know, to attract all viewers. It's different. Don't don't you go around stealing my ideas. You know, I, I should patent this. Yeah, I should. I'm getting off topic. So, how to not get ripped off when buying coins online. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, why, why would you buy a coin online? Why can't you just go to your local coin shop? Well, I hate to break it to you, buddy, but some people watching this, their local coin shop might be, what, hour, two hours away? And, you know, sometimes you just don't really feel like driving all the way to that coin shop just to, what, pick up a few coins that fill some holes in your album or something, but, yes, it's not worth the drive. No, definitely not. So, you you might just resort to buying coins online. Yes, you, you buy them and they're delivered right to you. It, it's stupendous. Although in a coin shop, there's less chance of you getting ripped off unless it's like a terrible coin shop. So today I'm going to try to have you not get ripped off by arming you this vital information on how not to get ripped off. Please, someone count how many times I've said how not to get ripped off in this video. But anyways, whether it be on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, you should always try to buy from either one, a reputable seller, or two, a lot of coin shops, what they're doing is, like Main Street Rare Coins is one, but, I mean, that's, that's up north. I live down south, so I haven't really thought of them yet, but... Main Street Rare Coins is one, you know, a lot of coin shops are doing that, where they have branches online. I'm sorry, I've got an itch. They have branches online where you can go and buy and hopefully not get ripped off. And, you know, reputable sellers. If a seller is well known for being a good, honest seller, go check them out. Okay, just go check them out. It's not going to hurt no one. Well, it's going to hurt your wallet, but it's not going to hurt no one else. But read the reviews. If you're looking at buying something, read the reviews, especially on eBay. They can pay people, uh, the people on eBay, to take the bad reviews off. So even if they have like three or four bad reviews out of 10,000 sales, read those three or four bad reviews because they might, they might have just missed them and be mindful of what they say. Those three or four bad reviews are saying the exact same thing. It's Probably a pattern there. Definitely a pattern there. So, anyways, um, that, that's a good rule. I, I think it is. Another thing, this scam. I mean, you see it online. You see it in physical stores. Well, mostly online, but sometimes in physical stores. This scam. Not only you are the target, but your grandma's the target too. Your whole family's the target. Everyone's a target. Let's say grannies. You know shopping online for a Christmas gift for little Timmy, and she says, Oh, yes, this little um, thing right here, Timmy's into coins and stuff, I'll buy this for him. And she buys it, and she gets ripped off. So, listen to what I'm about to say, protect your grannies. This scam, I saw one of these, what, in a physical store a couple months ago, and... Real quick, I'm sorry for, um, I don't really know how to edit the pictures in, so you're just gonna have to trust my description. It was a V-nickel in this little case, like that big, kind of like a half dollar holder. Let me get one, show you, kind of like one of these, but in, in one of those little holders. And it was worn slick, it was obviously polished. It, it, it was 50 cents at best, at best. My appraisal, 50 cents. But, anyways, I'm getting off topic, so it was in that. And it was in, that case was enclosed in a case that a proof set would come in. 
but the same, really approximately the same size, same material, even the same edges. And that's kind of um, to drag people in a little bit more. And surrounding this coin, this V nickel, was information about the Titanic because the V nickel happened to be minted in 1912. Now, I know coins that were actually from the Titanic go for a whole heck of a lot of money, but this coin wasn't from the Titanic. It, it just was minted in the year that the Titanic sank, 1912. So, this 50-cent nickel closed in a half-dollar case with a little, ca a little like, plastic shell and information on a card about the Titanic and a picture of the Titanic. All in all, about a $1 for the um, half-dollar holders, and... And the V-nickel, 50 cents. About a $2 setup. It, it, the price tag on it was $10. $10 for crappy V-nickel with, with a card about the Titanic. That is an obvious scam. Avoid it. Avoid it at all costs. Cannot stress it enough. Avoid it. So, let's talk about, you know, let's skip about, let's skip the barber half dollars and the you know, buffalo nickels, the crappy ones. Let's go to the expensive coins. I'm talking 1931S, 1909S, 1909S VDB, colonial coins, those stuff. Maybe even a Charlotte minted coin, you know, if you got the budget. But those are the types of coins. If you want to buy one of those online, they're going to be over $100 most likely. You have to buy them slabbed, okay? Getting ripped off on a $5, getting ripped off on like a $5 barber dime, I mean, it sucks, but it's no, it's not really a big deal. I mean, just $5, but $100 or more? Oh, that's a lot of money, you just be careful with your money. So, I'm going to tell you, you have to buy them slabbed, like slabbed, graded, whatever you want to call it, gotta buy them that way. And yes, they do come with a little premium, but I mean, they don't slab unauthentic coins, so you know you're getting what the buyer is selling. But not all slabs are created equal. They're, they're how do I put it? There are tier 1 grading companies, tier 2 grading companies, and tier 3 grading companies. I'll start, and as you can imagine, tier 3 are the worst. A good example of a tier 3 grading company that you'll see a lot is ICG. Now, ICG, their grades are unreliable. They're completely not reputable at all. I mean, their website's kind of nice, but their holders, they, they're they trying to copy NGC and PCGS. I'll get to those in a second. But, I mean, their grades, they're, they're just... Avoid ICG, but you might be saying, but, but there's no premium, or there's like a dollar premium on there if I buy this coin. There's a reason. There's a reason. Okay? It, they're just a joke. Avoid them. As uh, tier two grading companies, they're kind of um, they're not they're not terrible like ICG, but they're not good. Good example of a popular. I'm sorry if the camera's shaking, shaking so much. I can't talk. Good example of a tier two grading company would be you'd see a lot. Annex. Okay, Annex. They're they're just okay. Yeah, they're pretty much okay. Just, if you can avoid them, avoid them, but if you must buy from them, you can resell the coin for a slight premium. No, nowhere near as high of a premium, sorry, I have an itch. Nowhere near as high of a premium as a tier 1 grading company. They're just, take their grades with a grain of salt, is all I can say. But, as that one commercial says, just okay is not okay. So let's move on to tier 1. So tier one grading companies, really two, two tier one grading companies. Those are NGC, PCGS. Those grading companies buy from them. Okay, buy coins that are slabbed by them. They're reliable. Their grades are accurate for the most part. Other grades are pretty accurate. So the grades are accurate. They are pretty accurate. Their holders. Their holders have a bunch of anti-counterfeiting measures, especially the new ones. They're reliable. They're reputable. They've graded millions of coins. So, as you can see, 
they're pretty good, but you might be asking, well, how do I know if it's real? I'll tell you, because, I mean, with all things good, people must counterfeit it. So hang on. I'm going to be cheap here. Um, hang on. Which one? Yeah, I'll grab this one. So, I have in my hand just. I have in my hand. Just pretend this coin I'm about to show you is a 1931S. I know it's a 1941D wheat penny in Mint State 65 red, but just pretend it's a 1931S wheat penny, okay? See, because I'm cheap? Alright. And, and just in case you're wondering, this is an old. It's in, like an older style slab of NGC. So, but you can identify it by a little logo right there and up there. So, this is an older, and right here it says Numismatic Guarantee Corporation. I don't know if you can see that or if the camera will focus, but that's what it says. So, it's older, but at least we know it's genuine, or do we? See, these slabs, especially the older kinds, or easy to counterfeit. Really, the only anti-counterfeiting measure on here is this little sticker on the back. So, but a good way, a surefire way, to know if this holder is real, is I, I know it's blurry, I'm really sorry. This is on an iPhone 6S, cut me some slack. I'm gonna see if I can, um, zoom in. No, I cannot. Um, I, I, ha I really have to figure out how to work this camera. So as you can see, right below the grade, um, I'm so I'm really sorry. Grade is right here. Right below it will be a serial number. This serial number, let's see what it is. Two two zero one three two zero four seven. Right there. And a lot of times they'll have pictures online of what they're selling. If you want to know if your and if that NGC or PCGS lab is real, go to the NGC or PCGS website. They have a um, an actual little lookup where you can look up the serial number of the coin and type in the grade it got, and it'll verify if that coin was actually graded by them at one time. I've already done this. Yes, it is real. You can check the serial number yourself on NGC. But All right, let me put it back. So that's a good way to know if slab's genuine. And the last piece of advice I have for you is avoid wish.com. Now wish.com, you've probably heard of them. They're I don't even know what they are. They I've seen they have Morgan dollars for two dollars a piece, and you might be thinking, mm, yeah, it's Morgan dollars for a dollar a piece. I'm about to have a field day with this. There's a reason that, that they're $2 a piece. It's because they're not real, okay? Hate to break it to you. They're not real, okay? Pretty much anything on Wish.com is either, one, not what they say it is, or two, just not genuine at all. So if you're buying something from Wish.com, just don't. There's a reason why it's so cheap. Don't buy from Wish.com, okay? And that is all I have for you today. I really hope you learned something from this video. And if you want to leave a comment on this video, um, leave a comment, you know, below. Maybe like it if you want, subscribe, share it with all your best buds so my 9 subscriber YouTube channel can grow. Yeah, and let me know in the comments which video you'd like to see next. And I apologize really quick. There's no comment section. Sometimes when I upload a video, there's a comment section. Sometimes it doesn't let you add comments. I don't know. I really need to figure out this YouTube thing. But anyways, do do the stuff I said, please. It really helps out. I'm, I'm, what do I have for you? Um, I'll give you the, this this dime if you subscribe. This nice shiny American dime. If you subscribe. I'm a sellout. Well, bye guys.